Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to cover the energy changers part of our tour of the cell. And of course, I'm hoping you remember that energy changers refers to probably the two most familiar organelles beyond the nucleus inside of eukaryote cells, the mitochondria and the chloroplasts. We're going to treat these two organelles together. Uh, we're not going to really focus much on how they do what they do and their fine structure, but I just want you guys to think about them as similar organisms because they're both responsible for changing energy. Now, what do we mean by changing energy? Well, mitochondria and chloroplasts both take in energy and then release energy in a different form. So they've changed the energy. Uh, in the same way that a light bulb takes in elect electrical energy, and then releases light, which is why we have them. They also release heat as a byproduct. Uh, chloroplasts and mitochondria take in energy, okay, in different forms, of course, and then they release something that the cell needs. Uh, that's almost always ATP. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. And they also release heat as a byproduct also. So anytime chloroplasts and mitochondria are doing their jobs, they're also radiating small amounts of heat in the process. Uh, this is where uh, one of the sources of our body heat, for example. Excuse me, got a little confused there. Get back to where we're supposed to be. All right, the other thing that's important to know about chloroplasts and mitochondria that kind of pulls them together is the fact that they both are evolutionarily related to each other and in the way that they came to be. And that focuses on a very important theory in biology called the endosymbiosis theory, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes. Okay, the endosymbiosis theory is based on a really simple observation. People have noticed for a long time, ever since we had the technology to look at them, that chloroplasts and mitochondria look a lot like bacteria inside of eukaryote cells. They're about the same shape, about the same size. Uh, their membranes have some things in common with bacteria. And most importantly, and um, most recently discovered, is the fact that chloroplasts and mitochondria both have their own DNA, which is separate from the nucleus DNA of the cell. For example, you might have heard of mitochondrial DNA, which is called a uh, little m t DNA, mitochondrial DNA, very important in um, uh, studies of um, human origins and where people have come from and where they've migrated to over the last um, 500,000 years. And then there's also chloroplastic DNA, which you hear less about and we're pretty much going to skip over right now. So the point is, uh, chloroplasts and mitochondria both possess their own genomes, so to speak, separate from the cell's genome. And that means that they divide, replicate, and grow separate from the cell dividing, replicating, and growing. Okay, so the conclusion from all these observations is that mitochondria and chloroplasts have ancestors that were free living. And this means that at some point in the distant past, you know, approximately two billion years ago, um, their ancestors took up housekeeping inside of a eukaryote cell. So if you look at this diagram, we have a free living oxygen breathing bacteria, which is something like the ancestor of a mitochondrion. And then we have a free living photosynthetic bacterium, which is something like the ancestor of a chloroplast. And here we have a larger cell, maybe a predatory cell that was feeding on these bacteria. And they get engulfed by endosymbiosis. And instead of being digested, they start living inside of the cell and making it its host. That's where we get the symbiosis. This is a special type of symbiosis called mutualism. So they started out free living, and then they evolved some type of mutualistic symbiosis with a host cell. That means that this host cell got a benefit from keeping these little guys alive inside its cytoplasm. And the benefit is pretty obvious. The mitochondria is going to be cranking out ATP um, by digesting sugar or metabolizing sugar. And of course, chloroplasts are going to be using light energy to create sugar or to make sugar and ATP. So a, a cell with both of these could be like a modern day plant cell. A cell with only mitochondria could be like a modern day animal cell. So as you can see, after the mutualism, the mutualistic symbiosis evolved, then that relationship became permanent, which means it was obligate. These little bacterial 
um, mutualists could no longer live freely outside in the environment. They had to live inside of their host cell. And most recently, they've achieved full organelle status. And in modern biology, we now know that mitochondria and chloroplasts have actually relocated some of their genes to the nucleus of the cell. So the nucleus of the host cell is now replicating and managing the DNA uh, that's needed to run mitochondria and chloroplasts. Really interesting stuff. We're going to skip over most of it right now. All right, let's look at mitochondria and chloroplasts as in terms of their main job, which is energy conversion. Uh, mitochondria, they convert food energy, uh, which is almost always taught as glucose, but could include fats, proteins, amino acids, into a very important energy molecule called ATP. I'll talk more about ATP later. Uh, mitochondria are found in almost all eukaryote cells, plants, animals, fungi, protozoans, uh, you name it. Chloroplasts, on the other hand, are only found in photosynthetic eukaryotes, or the producers, which isn't just plants, okay? Don't forget that there are photosynthetic um, protozoans, or proto photosynthetic protists, called algae, okay? So there are some algae, um, seaweeds and things like that, that are not technically plants, but they're definitely photosynthetic. Uh, chloroplasts, they convert light energy, usually from the sun, into a chemo form of chemical energy, which could be something like glucose, fructose, starches, all those things, or they also produce ATP directly. So you can see that mitochondria and chloroplasts, their main job is energy conversion. Okay, here's a picture, here's a couple diagrams of um, chloroplasts and mitochondria. Um, over here we have a mitochondria. I'm just going to write mito here so you get the point. And you can see that it's kind of um, tic-tac shaped with an outer membrane surrounding it and an inner membrane that has a lot of surface area because it's very infolded. And so we have an area that's between the two membranes and then we have an area on the inside. All these places have names and functions, but we're not going to worry about them right now. I just want you guys to get an idea of the gross anatomy of a mitochondria. Over here we have a chloroplast. Uh, most famous because it's green. It contains a pigment called chlorophyll. Uh, the word chloros is an old Greek word that means green colored. Uh, chloroplasts also have a double membrane system with an inner membrane that has greatly increased its surface area by evolving into all these stacked, interconnected stacks that look a lot like batteries. Um, that's an interesting thing to remember. But remember, chloroplasts are receiving solar energy or light energy and converting it into chemical energy. Mitochondria are taking in one form of chemical energy and converting it into another form of, chem of chemical energy. So that's the job of these two very important organelles. We're gonna stop there and pick up in our next uh, video cast with another, with the rest of the, our tour of the cell.